Good morning again, everybody. Welcome to another Cars and Coffee with me, Kenny Brown. We're over the next hour or so. Actually, it might be abbreviated today uh, because we've got lots of other things to do that I can't talk about. Uh, we're going to go over, we're going to answer some of your questions, a little tech talk, a little show and tell. Uh, we've got some, some interesting things. We've got some good questions this week in from the Speed Therapy Society that uh, we'll get to here in just a minute. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, these are good questions. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Okay, we got uh, this last couple of weeks, we've been doing a lot of build plans. I've been doing a lot of consults on build plans. We've been doing quite a few build plans. So we're going to show you just kind of how some of those build plans look like. And then uh, uh, we'll, we'll uh, talk about Speed Therapy Academy again for a little bit. And then also we've had uh, sort of a run on rear shock tower braces for the 94 to 04, 04 SN95s, which can actually sometimes fit a Fox. I'll, I'll tell you about that later. And questions from the, the uh, society. So where should we start today? I think. Now, this, this, is, this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, this is actually a question from uh, Ben, uh, who's an alumni of the Speed Therapy Academy. And this is a question he actually had for the Academy. I thought it would be good to kind of transfer over uh, for this morning. And uh, uh, Ben was doing a lot of autocross, and he's switching over to uh, some, some track days. And he's taking a, a, a 95 Mustang from an uh, live axle to an IRS, which is going to be a really cool car, and he's got a monster motor in it. Anyway, here's this question. Let's see. For my Mustang, I don't want to mess with swapping gears between tracks, uh, track to street, street to track, uh, street to autocross, etc. Car is 95 with the KV IRS, a 428 Windsor, Tremec, a TKO 600, 400 horsepower, 500 pounds of torque. What's the best gear of choice? I've been running a 410 for 13 plus years and and uh, running this car and it's fantastic on the street and autocross but never had it on open track and that is the plan for next year uh so should i stay with a 410 or run the 355 uh, that came with the irs center section or go in the middle of 373. well here's here here's the thing my recommendation is before you overthink this you have to drive it on track with a 410 and see how it works. Now, I can tell you that when we do gearing for uh, race cars, uh, you know, with them, we've, we've got like, like for David's car out west, it's got a nut four nine inch in it, and it's really easy to change gears. I mean, you just pull the axles out, take all the bolts off, pull the entire uh, assembly out, drop a new one in, and it takes about, you know, half hour to 45 minutes to do a gear change. Uh, but what we're always looking for in, in, in racing is in fourth gear, which is the one-to-one -one ratio. In fourth gear, we're always looking for it to be just a tickle under the red line on the longest straightaway. Okay. We'll gear through the, the rear end ratio. So it's at the, just tickling the red line in fourth gear on the longest straightaway. Uh, and that way, if, if somebody gets a really good run, off of you know the previous corner and they get to red line they still have a ways to go you know fifth gear is like 0.8 so it's not that much of a a, a drop so you maintain momentum so that's, that's kind of how we gear it i did uh i need to pull up something here we did i did a, a chart for david's uh aix car and you can actually go online and find these formulas but this, this is for, uh, what I'm looking at is the top speed in fourth gear. On a Windsor motor, the 6,900 RPM, uh, the, uh, now these are a little, this is a 490, so the number's a little bit different than 8.8. .8. .8. So fourth gear uh, with the uh, 389 is 139, 4, 411 is 132, uh, 429 is 127. And in fifth gear, you can see you got a, a, a pretty big jump in in uh, speed, but you also lose a little, just to lose a little bit of mechanical advantage when you go to the 8.8. .8. Now, if the Windsor with a, a 6,500 RPM, uh, it's kind of just, everything just drops down a little bit. So for the 389, it's 132 in fourth gear, 
Uh, 411 is 125. And then if we're looking at a coyote, uh, a, a coyote in fourth gear, because, you know, our track ones, we can rev to 7,900. Is like 160 in fourth gear with the 389, 152 with the 410, uh, 145 with the uh, 429. So this this is kind of how we figured it, and we 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 picked. I can't remember which one we picked, but he was estimating what his top speed would be in the tracks he runs in fourth gear, and we picked the 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 uh, rear end ratio based off of that. Now, I mean, it's pretty simple. You go online and there's formulas. You just plug in, you know, the RPM, the tire diameter, uh, gear ratios, and it, it'll, it'll just spit out some numbers. So that's how we kind of do it with uh, with race cars. Now, as, as far as, as getting back to Ben's, I think you need to start with the 410 and see where you are. If you're on long straightaways, because the uh, Windsor's going to not have as much of a rev limit. I had no idea what the rev limit is. I'm going to say 6,500. Uh, if you you have to shift from fourth to fifth, he's got a TKO, so hopefully he's got a 0 0.8 fifth gear. So you have to shift from, if the long straightaway, you have to shift from fourth to fifth. Then you want, might want to drop down to 373 and or if you just kind of do some calculations and see, okay, I need to be that this much more speed at the at the end of the straightaway and then you can just figure out what kind of gear ratio to run but the very first thing is just try it i know like on our uh, our uh, cobra race cars uh with the tremec tk and uh, tko with the tremec uh, magnum xl we'll run uh, four tens with the cobras and that seems to work out really really well now with the uh, the 90 11 to 14 cobras uh we run the the uh, 373s and that works out really well so it just kind of depends on the tracks that you run on. What are you looking to be? You want to get your top speed in fourth gear to kind of sync uh, with the with the track. So it's kind of, kind of a long, long explanation, but uh, it's it's when you're doing racing, doing the gear thing is pretty tricky because what we're also looking for is the best gear to come off the the the, the, the corner right before the longest straightaway is like critical. And when we're doing transmission gears. We'll swap the gears out in the transmission. So whatever gear he's in, uh, coming off the, the last corner before the longest straightaway, we're maximum torque uh, all the way through the corner. That gives it a better launch off. So, you know, in racing, it's, it's kind of like you got a whole different things you do. You change the rear end ratio. You can pull the gearbox out and change gears. So that's kind of like how, how we how we gear it. So anyway, that's, uh, that's Ben's question. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Ralph wants to know, what's my favorite racetrack from a racer and spectator perspective? The food, the paddock, the amenities, the fans, the atmosphere. I got, I, I got to break that into a whole bunch of different tracks. You know, my favorite track, to, two favorite tracks to drive are Watkins Glen and Road America. Um, and then right after that, probably Mid-Ohio. As far as food uh, at uh, at uh, uh, Laguna Laguna Seca, there's there's a guy that does barbecue, and he does barbecue tri tip. And I gotta tell you, that is the best the best sandwich I ever had. The second best food would be the at, at Road America. There's a church group that has a, a broth stand at the top, and they do Johnsonville broths. And it's just for some reason. They just come off amazing. So there's the food. As far as amenities, I'd have to go with uh, uh, Coda. Uh, that's, I mean, that's, that's a pretty well laid out track. And as far as fans, gosh, I mean, any, any and all of the above. So that's, uh, that's kind of like, I don't have, there's no one track that fits all those, but there's a lot of different ones that kind of fit in there. So what are the people's uh, uh, in the audience? Uh, what, is, what is your favorite food, favorite track? Uh, so let's see what you what you like. Yeah, anybody else out there has has a favorite track or or track food? I mean, the track food at Road America is amazing, and those try those those tri tip tri, tri tip barbecue sandwiches at uh, Laguna is just one of the most amazing things I've ever eaten. I personally like the uh, the ice cream stand at Mid Ohio. 
can make great uh, shakes and malts there. Yeah, you can tell who's got the sweet tooth. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going for meat, you know. I want some meat. She's Let me for, see uh, what people cream. are saying here, if anybody has added anything. So, okay, we'll come back later and see what people's favorite track is and favorite food at the track. Okay. Okay. Or which tracks has to have the best track food. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think uh, I said before, we've had a number, we've done a number of the last couple of weeks, a number of build plans for people that all generated out of my 15 minute consults. Uh, if you don't know, uh, you can you can sign up and have a 15 minute, you know, complimentary 15 minute consult with me. I, I can answer your tech questions. Uh, we can talk about build plan your car setting up you know whatever you need to do uh if, if i can help you in, uh, in in a 15 minute console i will but we have a lot of people that just are ready to build and they just want direction so what, what i do is i'll sit down we'll talk a little bit i'll find out you know just a lot a lot i need a lot of information if i'm going to do a build plan for somebody i need to know what level of driving they're at is first is it a street car a track car a track street car a street track car and that's kind of like the first question. And then from there, uh, if it's if, there, if it's a track car in there, I need to find out you know, what's their level of experience, uh, you know, what kind of tracks they run, what tires they run. I mean, this is all pretty important into, in, into setting the car up. And from that, I'll generate, I'll generate a build plan for them. And a lot of people we will do it. So if a lot of people will. Some people just do it all at once. And other people like will do it in stages. So we can we can lay out the, the stages, the, the best order to do things in uh, so you don't have to go back and redo things. And that's the worst thing to do is you put something on your car and a year later you want to upgrade. You got to take it off. So I, I kind of factor that in. So we've got just a couple of uh, build plans here. OK. So now this is a 2014 GT500, and uh, the, this this particular person has been waiting a long time to do his car, and he just he he gathered tons of information, and he just wanted to do it right. So we had kind of a couple of really long conversations, and uh, we put together this package, and th this is <laughs> this is going to be a really really nice car. Uh, you know, obviously we did the front grip kit which uh, makes the car turn. Uh, and then on the back, we actually upgraded it to 4.5. That's a new K-Link rear suspension. So we've got the K-member, the control arms, the bump steer, and the cam caster camber plates. And then the back are the upper link uh, control arms, anti-squat brackets, rear suspension, the, the 4.5 rear suspension module. Uh, and then for shocks, I mean, this is, this, this is <laughs> that's what's really gonna make this car. He went for the uh, the JRZ Motorsports 11. Uh, <coughs> that is a true racing shock. And it's just a little bit short of the shocks that my late son Paul used to win the, the World Challenge Championship. And uh, so it, this this is going to be, this car is going to be like way cool. Now here's here's something that that uh, is kind of is, is a big bonus. He's also going to do the Speed Therapy Academy. And because he's in the academy, he gets a 10% discount on all Kenny Brown parts. So he basically, on all this, you know, he got almost a $600 discount, uh, which kind of helps pay for most of the academy. He, he really wants to do well. I mean, he, he, he's done track days for a number of years. He's just got you know, somebody's, uh, another brand's uh, lowering springs, which are kind of like, I think they're variable, like 180 to 300 or something like that. I can't remember. And it's just not, just not what what he what he needs. So we've got them all set up, um, and this is this is going to be a really cool package. And here's another one we we did just last week, and this one's for an O3 Cobra. And as you know, O3 Cobras are pretty fast. So this we did was kind of a little different. You know, first thing we want to do SN95 is get that chassis firmed up. So subframe connectors, jacking rails, and matrix brace, and the rear shock tire brace. And we're going to talk a little bit about rear shock tire brace here in a bit because uh, we've had. We've had quite a few of them go out lately, uh, so we thought we'd talk about it a little bit. And then with the front grip kit, uh, game member control arms, offset bushings, uh, caster plus, that's our unique caster plates, add more cast, more caster, less bucks for Fox and SN95. 
And with the Cobras, uh, with our K member, we relocate uh, the oil, oil filter. And some people at the same time put a, an oil cooler ready to go with it. Uh, and then the coilover package, is, it's our uh, custom, uh, cu custom valve, a strange package, double adjustable front and rear, and then a front sway bar and interlinks. We talked about sway bars last week. And then, we, then the rear grip on the on the IRS and this, I mean, we are the only only people in the aftermarket that totally specialize in 99 to 04 Cobra IRS, and it's because I was working on these types of cars back in the 70s. So when the Cobras came out in 99, I was super comfortable with the IRS. I knew how to make it work from the previous things. For everybody else, the Mustang world was going crazy with the IRS. Didn't know what to do with it. I knew exactly what to do with it. And we, we have such a great IRS package. We have a lot of people putting these on foxes these days, too. If you can find them, they're getting kind of scarce. But uh, they still pop up every now and again. But we did you know, the, the whole thing, the uh, diff bushings, forward torque brakes, and a rear steer kit. And then the tubular upper control arms, which are like less than half the weight of the factories. And the lower control arms, which upgrade to coilover shocks, which, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of coilover shocks because it's so easy to change spring rate. And then we did the IRS uh, geometry improvement, which we, basically what we do is we take a, the IRS carrier, whack off the pickup points, and uh, put them back on in different different location. So we make as much improvement as we could with the architecture that's there. Uh, the, you know, the main things we do that it, we in, increase camber gain. We also kind of stabilize the roll center. We keep it in a small circle. Uh, just right above ground where it needs to be rather than bouncing all over the place and, oh guess what another speed therapy academy and he got 600 about 660 dollar discount so i mean that's that, that, that's a pretty sizable discount so that's kind of how we lay them out now carrie didn't have enough time to put up is we ha actually have uh, a lot of people that those guys want to kind of do all at once you just get it done and drive we have a lot of people that, uh, from budgetary considerations, need to do things in stages. That's also something when we're talking about putting a car together, we talk about budget. Uh, because I mean, if you're on a limited budget, you're not going to want the 11 Motorsport shocks or even the, the uh, R, uh, GRG RS Pro uh, double adjustables. You know, so it'll put you into a shock that, that's more suited. If, you're, if, if we're setting you up, like let's say it's a S197, doing it in stages, uh, I always... I always work through, you know, you want to get the jacking rails on first and the matrix brace. But from there, uh, 197, start with the rear. Get the rear grip kit done if you do it in stages. And then go to springs and shocks and then get the front grip kit done. Now, in, if somebody's going to, at a later date, upgrade to 4.5, which is the K-Link, then that actually influences the shock package that we put on the car. Because with the, with the K-Link, we have to go so much higher on rear spring rate just to get the car balanced because it generates so much incredible rear grip uh, but the, well, the feedback we're getting from people with 4.5 suspension is just totally amazing so anyway that's kind of how we do build plans uh you know the consultation is free uh and we haven't we actually you know it's it's not just a build plan it's like other things some technical stuff we had somebody call me last week that is has kind of a it's, it's sort of a kit car thing but he has another uh, car project, so he's actually going to be in town this week, and he's going to sit down and he's going to basically. Uh, I, I I've done this for a couple other people. Is you know he he contracts me as a, a supporting consulting engineer on his projects. So I'm I'm interested to see what his project is, and uh, well, next time we're on we're going to talk about it. And next week we're going to do an encore because we've got something special happening. And then the week after that, I'll, uh, maybe I, it, it's a pretty exciting project. I'll let you know about it. So that's kind of you know, the whole build plan thing is, is people just sometimes don't know what there's so much noise out there uh, and they don't know what to do. And, you know, my, my, my best recommendation is the worst place you can get information is the Internet in the paddock or the guy down the street that thinks he knows everything. Uh, if you really want good information, set up a 15 minute. We'll talk about it. I'll set you on a path uh, that uh, I, I guarantee you, whatever we do, the car's going to drive great. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. And anybody that's driven one of my cars or a car with a suspension package on it and brakes, 
are totally blown away. So that's kind of like the, the build plan thing. Uh, so also we wanted to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about oh, short wheelbase T-Bergs and then also uh, a little bit on the, on the rear uh, shock tower brace. So let's see, let me see what I have to share. Huh. Okay. What are you trying to share, Kenny? I, I didn't, didn't have it open. Okay. I, I didn't, didn't have the PowerPoint open. Okay. We were kind of panicking running around because we were running late because of a couple of things. So here we go. Okay. So this is my, we, oh, we just talked about the build plan. That was my tech talk for the day. And now. Uh, yeah. If you're just joining us. Oh, yeah. I always forget. You know, if, if when Carrie is, is here, she always ha holds up this sign and says, if you forget, if I forget, uh, I'm Kenny Brown. This is Cars and Coffee. And, uh, you know, we're all sharing some of my information. It's, if, if people are interested, just, you know, what my, my background is, is like 50 years of uh, building great cars and professional motorsports. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many days I have spent at the track over the last, uh, you know, since the 70s. Uh, it's, it's probably thousands. But I, I talk from my firsthand experience. If I know something, I'll, I'll tell you. If I don't know something, uh, I'll, I'll tell you I don't know. Because I'm, I'm, with my engineering head, I just have a real hard time BSing people. So that's one thing you're not going to get here is BS. You are going to get some of the best technical support you can get in the industry, though. Okay, short wheelbase T-Bird. We did, uh, this is kind of like a project. It's It started, uh, I was like real friendly with the guys in the, uh, I guess we call it the, the, the Fox-based group uh, at Ford in the X garage. That's where they do all the you know, pre-production modifications and stuff in uh, uh, art. Is it art? No, I can't remember his name. Anyway, they also did, <clears throat> and their group was, was Mustang, T-Birds, and Mark 7. Uh, so they did, they were like way ahead of their time. They actually put an entire chassis together. Uh, uh, instead of welding, it, it was bonded. Uh, but it was like too far ahead, and, and the management at Ford just couldn't get their head around that one. Now it's like commonplace. Uh, but they, they put together a short wheelbase T-Bird. Uh, just to play with and it was pretty cool and it it actually got got frowned upon uh, by upper management and uh, so i i, I kind of carried the torch from there and we built uh, a number of short wheelbase t-birds and this is one of them this is actually a short wheelbase super coupe that turned into a track car in, in fact, as story as with with this car uh i was up in detroit uh on a weekend and i met jim kennedy uh, Jim Kennedy was the the manager in charge of the the whole X Garage uh, Fox Group, and I brought this uh, short weight wheelbase T Bird up for him because it was going to be you know I think this is Car and Driver. It was going to be in Car and Driver like the following week, so we jumped in this and uh, met him at like a, a restaurant and we drove to the proving grounds. As we were driving into the proving grounds, Neil Ressler, who was the like one of the you know way way up uh guys at ford like way up was driving out and he rolled his window down and he looked at the car front and back looked looked right in our to jim kennedy and said i don't want to know about it and drove away so that was like a plausible deniability but it was a pretty cool car and we, we did quite a few of them and we also did some uh supercharged thunderbirds uh let me pull up. I'm pushing buttons here in case you're wondering. This is this is the article that was in uh, Car and Driver, and this this is just the first page of it, or it was the second page, and they were incredibly complimentary. Uh, something strange that happened is they were doing like a high speed test 
the car and driver used the Chrysler Proving Grounds. It's in, like in Chelsea, uh, Michigan. Uh, the thing blew a head gasket. I called up the guys in the in the uh, in the Fox Group, the T Bird Group, and I said, "Hey, this thing just blew a head gasket." They go, "Oh, yeah, we know, we know." And uh, so they hustled it up, and I had a, got a set of <clears throat> brand new prototype parts, head gasket, head bolts. We rebuilt the car overnight at, at a friend's of mine's house. We got it back to car and driver the next day. It ran like a champ. So that's just one of these, you know, when, when, you, when you go to a magazine, you have to be prepared for anything. And then this is, uh, we did a number of these supercharged T-Birds, which are pretty cool. That's another magazine. This is, what magazine is this? It's probably Steve Turner, so it's got to be uh, one of the uh, Mustang books. Uh, what we had to do, because nobody had a supercharger kit for the T-Birds, <clears throat> we actually had to do it own. We got the superchargers from uh, from Vortec, and then we built our own bracketry, our own plumbing, uh, and you know made it made a kit that fit in the uh, fit in the T bird, and we did I don't know made in the number of in the twenties something like that, and they were they were just really cool cars. We did the same thing with the Marauders. Uh, we built our own kit for the Marauders based off of we got the Vortec head and then made all the bracketry and everything did it ourselves. So those, you know, the T-Birds were, you know, we did quite a few of those. It was really cool. The short wheel base were amazing. And then the uh, the supercharged birds were even better. And that was supercharged. Well, the, the Super the super Coupes had a supercharged V6. Uh, we did the supercharged V8. Okay, let's go back to see what else we have in here. Got to start at the beginning again. Ah, this is, uh, yeah, it's kind of a fuzzy picture, so you can tell how long ago it was. But uh, that's me, uh, that's Paul, and my late son, and that's Doug Killian. And we we started the first short wheelbase with a body shop that was near us in Omaha, and they were or Omaha at the time. And they, they you know, they, they said they were going to do it, but they, they kind of got... I don't know. They kind of went soft, and I got a hold of Doug, who has uh, a body shop down in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, and gosh, what's it? Remember the name of his shop, Carrie? Is it Car something? Sure, it's uh, AutoCraft, and it's more than a body shop. He does a lot of restorations and really, really quality, quality work on his his vehicles. Does a lot of really one-off vehicles. Yeah, I mean, he is super talented. Uh, it's just like you can't tell from that, but he used to be a model, uh, and he, he looks like it too. But anyway, I mean, he's just super talented, really smart guy, figures things out. Uh, this is this is the uh, the super coupe, uh, and he, he, I mean, it's it's like we took I think eight inches out behind the the door, and it just so much changed dynamics of the car. I mean, it just it just it felt lighter, quicker, more nimble. I mean, it was an absolute ball to drive. Now, this is showing how we actually took it out. It's something else on the short wheelbase is like when we shortened it up, uh, we actually improved the overall handling because, uh, oh, God, one, one of the engineers at Ford that was in charge of all like the Trans Am cars and, and, uh, and road race cars, uh, God, I can't remember his name either, uh, anyway, he was telling me that with a with a long wheelbase on a race car, they had a real they had a real problem with the rear moment of inertia, uh, and you know, keeping the back of the car together. And by shortening it up, that kind of takes that problem and, and, just, and makes it go away. But this is you can see the cut, uh, one out and one in, how it slides together. And there's another one getting slid together. <laughs> this this was. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think this was so cool, and the cars were amazing. Yep, there's a supercharged bird. And that's actually, huh, that's a different magazine than the one I showed you. You know what magazine this was in? No, I don't remember. Uh, maybe down in the corner it says there. No, nope, this just has our address. I don't remember. Jack Jack Keebler's got to be car and driver. So that's 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 what this the uh, 
this is the package look like? Actually, Jack Keebler was Motor Trend. Mo okay, Motor Trend. That's right, because he we he 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 did the uh, the uh, the cover when we had uh, uh, we had our car and I think somebody else's car on the cover of Motor Trend, and uh, that Jack Keebler did that article too. So it, uh, I mean, for for a street car with a two valve uh, modular motor, I mean, it just ran great. And there's a little shot we had. We put a, even put a street cage in it. Uh, we did a lot of street cages back then. We haven't 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 had the opportunity to bring street cages back into production because we've got so many things in line. You know, we moved back to Indy from Chicago. We basically started from scratch. Had to redo all of our products and you know, re-engineer them, do new fixtures, uh, so that we get them, you know, super high quality. And we just haven't got to the uh, haven't got to the uh, uh, street cages yet. Uh, this is was Russ Hamilton's car, and he actually turned it into a track car. Uh, I mean, he, he just loved that car. He drove the wheels off of it. Uh, okay, I guess, is this another one, if, if you're just joining us? Uh, of course, because I thought I'd better put little hints in there for you, Kenny, since you seem to forget. So this one is, uh, if you like what I'm sharing, that's you, uh, I'll give you a hint. I'll read this one for you, Kenny, so you know next time. How's that okay. sound? So if you like what I'm sharing, remember to share with your friends. Watch live on Facebook or uh, on our YouTube channel. It's at 10 a.m. every uh, Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, if you miss it, you can catch all the replays on the Kenny Brown Performance YouTube channel. And always remember to like, follow, and click the bell for notifications. And we'd really appreciate it if you could share with your friends. Uh, this is great information. A lot of people watch it in replay. Uh, so if you're on there, make sure you share with your friends as well. Okay. You know what you forgot to say? What? Send in your questions. Well, I will answer questions live at the end. If, if we have any questions, I'll answer them live. Ah, darn, you caught me. So that's why it takes both of us. Oh, okay. Shock tower brace. Rear shock tower brace. Let me, uh, when we started doing the IRS Cobras, we switched to a coilover package and we, to do the coilover package, you had to do different control arms because the, <clears throat> the the shock on the stock control arms is mounted in a single shear, and it's you know basically the back of the car was designed for just a shock absorber, and when you put a, a, a you know a spring on a coilover on the shock, then all of a sudden you're putting all the loads uh, from spring and shock through the one pin on the lower control arm, which I didn't like. I like double shear. And, and then at the, at the top, puts a lot of load on the top. And right away what we did is we did a uh, rear shock tower brace to kind of stabilize the back of the car. And this, this is why. This is, uh, uh, these are from Ben at the, at the academy. He sent these in that he saw. This is when the coilover package just completely tore the, uh, the shock mount right off the chassis, right off the body. Uh, you know, when you put, like I say, when you put, you're putting all that load into something that wasn't designed for it, which is why we did the three-point uh, rear shock tower brace. Uh, now, you always hear me talk about triangles, triangles, triangles. So what, what we've done is this actually has a bunch of triangles, even though it's a straight across the top. It dips down, it touches in the middle. So we've got a, a, a attachment point in the middle. And then a triangle here, triangle here. And then if you look between here and here is a triangle, here to here is a triangle. So there's triangles everywhere to stiffen out the back. It does an amazingly good job. Okay. I'm pushing buttons here in case you wonder what I'm doing. I'm back. Uh, so this is, yeah, here's what they kind of look like in person. Uh, you know, it goes on the, the where the, where the shock comes through the body right there. And then we have two bolts to hold it in place, another bolt in the middle to kind of hold it down. And then again, the other side, the same thing. We've got these two, uh, two bolts mount through here, and then the shock goes through there. And we, for some reason, a whole bunch of these went out this week. Uh, somebody must be talking about it somewhere, but it's a really nice piece. And you actually feel that, the S S197, the SN95. Uh, now, I know you're going to ask, what about S197? Okay, 
here's the deal. Oh, also in Fox, you can make make the the SN95 rear shock tower brace fit in most Fox chassis. What we find, because the production tolerances are like a foot, uh, that in some cars it fits perfect. Some cars it's too it's not long enough. Other times it's too long and tight. So you know, for those instances, what we tell people. If it's tight, well, first of all, you have to scrape all the the, uh, the caulking out, and then sometimes it means that they're like just a little bit tight. Sometimes a great big hammer, you know, BFS, big hammer, uh, to kind of make enough room so they drop in. The ones that are that there's gap, uh, either they can make a plate or we would send them plates to make up the gap. So you can use them in a Fox and SN95. And I probably you're saying, what about an S197? Well. The chassis are designed so much stronger in the S197. The rear shock tower brace is not mandatory, but it, it's kind of nice. However, we, we built them for a while, a few years ago, and we ran into the same problem that we did with the Fox cars. I mean, they would fit perfect on some cars, and some cars that were too tight, and some cars that were too loose. So we actually stopped making them uh, because it was it, it was – more cars that were looser tight than cars that fit perfect. So we did. We I've got a prototype that's been sitting around for months and months, but because of other projects in line, we haven't got to it yet. But what we've done is we've kind of cured that, and we, we are, are on the shock tower on that end and the shock tower on that end, and of course we got our extra little bolt in the middle. What we're doing is we're putting a turnbuckle so that you can actually adjust the length. Of the rear shock tower brace so that there we go so that you know it's going to fit the car perfect uh that's the only solution we came up with like i say this is just a prototype uh it's uh, it's probably i don't know when we're going to get into production uh, we've got something really big happening next week that we'll talk about in the future which is why next next saturday is going to be encore presentation and then the saturday after that we've got tons of really cool new things that uh, we're pretty excited about to share with you so there we are on rear shock tire braces. I think I've got through everything on my list, Carrie. Did you finish all your questions? Oh. Uh, what would he do without me, guys? Okay, here's one on SN95. When using a rear wing, how far forward from the front bumper do I want the leading edge of the splitter to be? Is there a rule of thumb on height, width, and style versus the front square length. And, okay, on, on the front now. If in the, in the Speed Therapy Academy, we spend a lot of time on arrow, and just to kind of like a rule of thumb, I can tell you that in in sanctioning bodies like uh, World Challenge and things like that, the rule is that your your splitter cannot be more than two inches uh, off the off the bumper line. So typically, what they'll do is they'll just you know two inches all the way around from the bumper line and the, the problem with that is that it tucks in too much. Uh, I always bring them out, a little square them off because you can make a lot of a lot of downforce on the front corners of the car. So I mean, it's it's. I saw some uh, data somewhere that anything once you get up around four inches, you create more drag. You create a lot a lot of downforce, but a huge amount of drag. So it, the, the ones that if you look at the Pikes Peak cars, they got these mammoth uh, front splitters on them. But you have to realize they're going through really thin air and they've got a lot of horsepower to push them. And so they need a ton of downforce, you know, going up Pikes Peak, those massive front trays on them, which, which work, it creates a lot of drag. But when, when you're in thin air, it's kind of like offsets itself on, on drag. Uh, so that's kind of like, you know, the rule of thumb is, is the, basically the sanctioning body, say two inches. Uh, you know, you can, you, can, you can go to three maybe, uh, but beyond that, uh, there's no real gain. Uh, and you just start picking up drag. So that's kind of like the rule of thumb on the on the front splitters. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, this is this is this kind of. I'm trying to figure out this question. So in terms of data, what are the top five things you want to know when helping with with car setup, different tracks, all the things considered. I know you want tire data first and alignment, but what's next? Okay. 
we we have a, a lot of people in our program that you know they'll call in and i'll help set their car up uh anytime they call in i can tell you the very first thing i ask is what are your tire temperatures uh, because you know we, when we go to the track and again this is something we cover in big detail in the academy i should maybe talk about the academy next Kerry. you forgot to remind me oh i hadn't forgotten oh okay uh now i forgot what i was talking about <laughs> You're talking about tire temps. Okay, tire temperatures first, uh, because you know what we, what we do it. We set the pressures first, then the camber, and I don't make any adjustments to the car until the, tire, the pressures are right, the camber's right, and then if I need, if the car's doing this or doing that, you know, I'll, I'll make some adjustments. Uh, but the you know when talking to people about setting their cars up, I mean, you know, things I need to know is, you know, you know what kind of car, what kind of power, what kind of tires. Uh, you know, and then the spring rates, and and then from there we can talk about you know different setup. But each each car is kind of individual. It, it's hard to really come up with uh, with uh, uh, you know uh, just blank. This is what you do. Uh, I mean, there's certain things, and again, we we out we we spent two two days uh, talking about track and car and car setup uh, in the academy. Uh, so, but I think that just leads me right into the Speed Therapy Academy, Carrie. I think so too. It's okay. like you had it planned. Huh? So it's almost like you had it planned, but you didn't. Oh no, I had a plan. <laughs> okay, we're starting another speed therapy academy on the second of November, and this is, I mean, if you like what I talk about in cars and coffee, if you feel like you get really good information from some of the the like workshops I do, and we're planning on doing more workshops in the future. Uh, and you really, really want to know more, more detail, then the Speed Therapy Academy is for you. It, uh, I mean, it's 16 weeks. It's a paid program. And we, I go through the car. The first thing I do is we go all the way through the car. We're talking about suspension, shocks, brakes. So you get a, an understanding of how everything works. Um, and even the suspension, we even go pretty deep into suspension geometry and how I make cars work so well. And there's some secret stuff in there that our academy guys are sworn to secrecy on uh, because, you know, I got the best geometry in the, in the industry. So we go through that. We have safety. I mean, we go pretty much go through the whole car. Then we get in the end. We talk about setup at the track. We go through there's a couple of weeks. We go through uh, cause and effect. You know, if, if the car does this, what are things that could make it do that? Uh, so that at, at the end, you know, you get a really, really good understanding of how everything works. It's, you know, my goal is the people that go through the academy show up to the track. They know what to do. They know how to do it. They, they run great. And, you know, everybody, it's, it's, instead of being that guy, it's, oh, that guy type thing. Uh, so that's my goal is the people really, really show up the track and know what they're doing. And because the more you know, the better you're going to go. Oh, I like that. The more you know, the better you go. I just made that up. <laughs> So, so the other thing is, it's, it's also for uh, performance streetcar people, too. It's not just uh, track. You talk a lot about track, but a lot of what applies on the track applies for the street. So, yeah, we've actually had a number of streetcar guys to go through it, too, because, yeah, it, it's everything's applicable. You can take what we talk about for track cars and actually apply it to your streetcar. So we had, I think the last time we had just as many street people as track people in the last academy. So this would be, this would be the third academy. Then we also have uh, what's called master class where every other Thursday uh, we meet Tuesday evenings and Thursday evenings at seven Eastern and it's, and it's on zoom. So with being on zoom, it's like everybody's in the classroom, everybody, we could talk back and forth. It's pretty cool. And, and people can ask questions. So it's almost like being there. And then we have a master class where I, I bring someone in from the industry. That's an expert in some field and they'll talk for maybe 20 minutes or so about their level of, of expertise. And then we open up for questions where guys can ask them questions. That turned out to be a lot more popular than I thought it would be. Uh, we have so many, I can never remember them. We do one on, on uh, wheels. Steve Shard from uh, Forge Line on wheels. We get uh, Ryan from uh, Fluid Iron on, on cooling and radiators. Eric from BAT that does all our hardware, talks about hardware, uh, as in uh, 
uh, and fittings, you know, air equipment, things like that. We have Doug from a uh, uh, driver doing some driver coaching. Yeah, Doug, who's a number two guy at the Porsche School, does some driver coaching. Uh, let's see, we have Tony the Tuner uh, talking about tuning cars. Uh, who else do we have? We had oh, we had uh, Ben from Impact uh, talking about safety, which was uh, when we first had him. I thought, well, you know, what's to learn? Uh, you know, for me, what's to learn? And, and I learned a lot. Uh, I just learned a lot from things I didn't know. So I, that's how I like bringing people in because I, I learned from them too. And when you sign up, you get this nifty, you see that Speed Therapy Academy polo shirt. And then you also get the Speed Therapy Academy uh, notebook. And inside it's got, di it's got dividers. You see that? Uh, the there. other thing that you don't have in there, Kenny, is a whole bunch of uh, sheets on um, car prep, uh, car setup, what to check. Um, just, just a whole check, bunch check, of check sheets. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole bunch. Well, let's kind of move on here. So if you want to sign up, uh, you can either click on the link in the comments or give us a call and uh, we can talk through it with you to see if it's right for you. We're not going to add you or, or talk you into it if it's not right for you. Um, a lot of people are going to be doing it. Um, the timing isn't right for them, but they're they're uh, already signed up for the next one. So anyway, just give us a call and we can talk it through for you. And if you need to sell it to your significant other, we have many, many recommendations. That's how <laughs> it. So just yeah. give me a call. Yeah. And then the other thing, I mean, it comes with benefits. The alumni get 10% off on all Kenny Brown products, 10% off on Bear products, you know, brakes and rotors. And then as far as on brake pads, uh, they get their brake pads pre-bedded for free, which is great. That way you don't have to wait, waste an entire session the first day just bedding in brake pads. You're having a pre-bed, bang, put them in and go. Uh, what else? There's some other things in there, too, I forgot. Well, that's okay. They, they can find out by clicking, either calling us or clicking on the link. And there's a lot of information on the link telling you a little bit about the program. Um, so let's see. I think we're ready for questions, Kenny. Okay. How does that sound? And guess what? You said you were going to run short. It's We're not even starting questions yet. It's uh, 47 minutes into this. So, uh, so, so yeah. much for that. Yeah. I do have a question while I'm getting uh, linked up here, and I want everybody to maybe respond to this. So Kenny seems a little tired today. So A, could it be because we're uh, babysitting the, the grand dog this weekend? Grand so we have a dog in the house and he climbed in bed with, with us. Um, B, is it because Kenny had uh, a wee dram of scotch and maybe he had a couple more than a wee gram, dram of scotch? Or B, C, is it because we have this big thing happening that we're going to share with you in another week or so that he's prepping for? So what is it? Let us know what you think. Or it could be all three. Yeah, I was going to say D, all three. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. Um, okay, on the uh, question on what, the best track and best food, uh, Brad says, brats at Road America and ice cream at Summit Raceway, Norwalk. I've heard about the Norwalk ice cream. I haven't tasted it yet, though. Yeah, we've never been there. But yeah, the, the brats at Road America. I can't remember the name of the church. It's a Baptist church that runs the, the brat stand. Right at, the, right at the top of the, the paddock and they have this huge charcoal thing and they just do them by the, you know, almost by the hundreds. Yeah, there's other brats sold at Road America, but that's the best yeah, one. Those, those it's the one Baptist the best. Yeah. Um, church that puts it on. Okay, yeah. Kyle. Yeah, every, every now and again at the, at, the, at the snack bar, sort of at going down the hill in the paddock, uh, they have uh, roasted corn. And what they do is they take the roasted corn, they peel the husk back, and you grab the husk, and then they just dump it right into a thing of hot butter and pull it out and just dripping butter when they pull it out. <laughs> if you like corn on the cob, I mean, that's the only way to have it. Okay, what else? Okay, so, and if you're just joining us or this is your first time watching Ke uh, Cars and Coffee with Kenny Brown, uh, this is uh, when Kenny is opening for live questions. So if you have any questions for him, just type them in the chat. Um, so here's our other, uh, Kyle uh, says his favorite track is Mid-Ohio. Yeah, the thing I like, Mid-Ohio is a technical track. And it's interesting when I'm coaching people at Mid-Ohio, they'll get to a point and they kind of plateau. They just, they know they can go faster, they just can't go faster. So what I tell them to do, I say, slow down, 
slow down and you will go faster. And believe it or not, that works every time. Because once they, they stop trying to overdrive the car, because it's a very technical track, once they stop trying to overdrive the car and get a little more relaxed, all of a sudden they're smoother and they don't think they're going fast, but the stopwatch says differently. So yeah, Middle High is a great track. Okay, the next question is, this is when we were talking about, I think you were talking about the bill pens and the IRS. Uh, Roy has a question. Would it make sense to make your own tubular rear IRS cradle versus remodding a used one? That's, a, that's an excellent question. Uh, it actually is something we have talked about just simply because IRSs are getting more and more difficult to find. But it's definitely something we've talked about. Uh, so maybe, you know, but that's probably down the road. At some point, we're going to run out of everything. So we're talking about making some of our own stuff for that. You mean talking about running about OEM? Yeah, outfit. running out the OEM stuff. Yeah, so that we use right now. And Roy, Rory also says, Kenny is king. I know that will embarrass you. Let's see. Uh, your face is kind of pale right now. Maybe it'll turn a little red, Kenny. Um, Brad, <laughs> Brad also says uh, that the um, regarding the supercharged, your, uh, the Kenny Brown supercharged Thunderbirds, uh, he also mentioned the car had a manual transmission in it. Yeah, yeah, we put a manual in it, uh, which makes it a lot more more of a track car than an automatic. Okay. And, and we also have Colby says uh, street cages for an S197 would be great. Do you have a cost on that? Uh, no, it's it's another product that's kind of in line. Uh, we we I mean, there's only so much we can get done. We're tr we're trying to work on ways to get more things accomplished, but uh, yeah, there's only so much that we can get done. It's We've got them. Uh, we've made them in the past. Uh, I don't, you know, you have to know the rules around here. You can't ask me anything but part numbers and prices. So, well, I'm, I'm going to kind of guess on that. That it's probably our cages run between eight and nine hundred in the pre in historically. I'm sure with costs rising up, it'll probably be higher than that, Kobe. Yeah. Just to let you know. Boy, steel costs. My gosh, steel costs costs are going through the roof. Yes, they are. So. Um, also, Roy has a question on the uh, T-Bird. Um, so you're saying that if you took eight inches off, you have a 105-inch wheelbase? Is that uh, well, you test my memory, but yeah, I think so. Like real close to a Mustang. Okay. And then Paul Dondero. Hi, Paul. It's good to see you here. Um, Paul says, does the K-Link add more stress to the rear shock towers, and would the rear shock tower brace help with rear end performance? Uh, no, it doesn't add any, any, any more stress to the rear shock towers because the, you know, the, the whole K-Link unit is you know, attached to the frame and the uh, radius rods attached to the axle. So that's all the loads are in there. The, uh, you know, like I say, we've got, we've got a strut tower brace, a, a prototype. We just haven't got it in production yet. Uh, so far, the, you know, the experience we've had with S197s is they're a lot stronger than uh, the SN95. And we haven't really made it critical to have a rear shock tower brace, but it would be nice. And like I say, it, it's it's in line. We got a lot of things in line for production. Okay. Okay. And let's see. We have uh, Dylan Hawkins, who actually just signed up for this. He's going to be in the next Speed Therapy Academy this morning. Sorry I'm late. I forgot what day it was. <laughs> That's okay, Dylan. Uh, I, th I Actually, that leads into something. I think what we're going to start doing is a lot of people forget or miss it or something. I think we're going to set up something where you can uh, send in your phone number and we'll just send you a little little text bleep so you get that. Uh, won't be annoying just a little bit before 10 o'clock on Saturday mornings. Or um, on Friday, too. Yeah. So anyway, um, Dylan, we look forward to having you join us. Uh, Paul Dendero says, the more you know, the the fun, the more fun you have. Is that That's what you absolutely said? Absolutely true. Is that like, what did you say? The more, the more you know, the faster you go. <laughs> That's a good one too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like it, if if you know what you're doing, you get your car set up. And I mean, that, that's what track days or, or, you know, pleasure driving is all about. How does the car feel? You know, a car that feels good is such a pleasure to drive. I mean, that, you know, that's kind of like why my cars work so good because I build them for myself first. I love good driving cars. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the more you know, you go to the track, get it set up, man. You're just, you're, you're going, you're going quick. You're, you're having a good time. So that's very true. Yeah, that's great. I'm going to write that down. 
that might have to be our speed therapy academy uh, tagline. Okay. Let's see. Okay, here is uh, the answer to the question whether Kenny is tired because of A, he's dog sitting. B, he had uh, more than a wee dram of scotch last night. C, because he's uh, has a big plans this next week or so that he'll be sharing with you. Or D, all of the above. All of, almost everybody said D, all of the above. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, for, for those that don't know, I'm you know, my heritage is Scottish, um, son of immigrants, so you know I'm pretty pretty closely tied to Scotland, and uh, I just have an affinity for single malt scotch. Uh, I have a pretty nice collection, uh, and the reason I have a collection because I never drink too much of one bottle and drink some, and then put it up. So I, I love my single malt scotch. Yes, he does. Um... So anyway, let's, we have a couple of questions left. Uh, this is last call. If you have any other questions, please add them to the chat. Uh, Anibus, hey, Anibus, An uh, that's cool to see you. Uh, Anibus has, a, oh, he, he says right here, he has the uh, full uh, Kenny Brown 4.4 system, Bill Stain shocks and Peddler Springs, getting loud pop with full wheel turn in reverse. Everything is properly torqued. Pop seems from the front. Any ideas? Boy. I don't. Uh, that full lock. I think maybe check your camera plates. I'm just thinking what what would happen at full lock, and it's either steering or, gosh. Is this called couple, stump stump the Kenny. Yeah, this is it's stump Kenny day. It, what what you might do is have somebody outside the car and back up and see if they can kind of get a, a more definitive and uh, idea of where the pop is coming from. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just don't have a good answer. I know a full lock. Let's see. Gosh, I just don't have a good answer. I think I make... almost have to have to feel it or hear it. Do you think the spring could be popping? Uh, that's possible. He's got Petter Springs on it. Yeah, and and Bill Stein's. That's why I say check the the, uh, the camber plate. Uh, might be something in the camber plate is kind of like making a a, a a jolt at full lock. Maybe the spring's moving. And so, if you have any other questions on that, uh, Anibus, once you schedule fifteen minute with Kenny, and you can tell me what you what you found out, and maybe you can continue to solve it if you haven't solved it. So, and Eric Lay has a question. Question, would you, when would we know that the adjustable uh, shock uh, brace is available for purchase? Would it fit Russ's car? Oh, you have Russ's car. Okay, cool. You know what, uh, the T-Bird. Oh, yeah. That's that's the supercharged T-Bird that we, we just showed. It was, yeah, Russ Hamilton was a really close friend uh, of, of, the, uh, of the company back then. He was like family. And he was also a sheriff, which is, is handy. But he, uh, he was a cancer he passed away from. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he passed away from cancer, which was really sad. But the story gets sadder because his, his daughter got the car and she loved it. But it was kind of like one of these freak things. One of her, her relatives actually killed her. Uh, and her yeah. son. Yeah. And her yeah. son. Yeah. Yeah, and her son. It was so sad. Was so, so. sad. so sad, sad, sad. But that car has a lot of heritage. And Eric, I... I we we're pulling through our all the teeper stuff we have a whole bunch of pictures of his car someplace um so when we come across them we'll have to share them with you um on track and things okay let's see so uh brad also reckons some good alignment racks have turn plates and those are good for diagnosing uh these type of issues that's uh, anibus's question so um this is last call for questions. If you have any other questions for today, just let us know. And Kenny, you're one minute over. So you, you made it your whole hour. You thought it was going to be a half hour show. <clears throat> oh, I made it through. Yay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, next week again is going to be an encore presentation. And if you uh, want to uh, catch up on any more uh, Kenny Brown speed or uh, cars and coffee, uh, please make sure you visit our Kenny Brown uh, YouTube channel. And on there is all the replays. Plus, there's a little snippet. So if you're looking for something on breaks, there's a break section. You can watch, uh, you know, a three to five minute video on that. So 
So in, in wrapping up, Speed Therapy Academy is coming up. Oh, this one. Uh, soon, so sign up. Oh, the artwork, we still have Dan Gurney up there at the mall, the mall. And my trusty old toolbox has been with me. Yeah, we've been at every major racetrack in North America together. Uh, so anyway, and so we're going to or Encore next week, and the week after that, it's going to be a very special Cars and Coffee. And that's all we're going to say for now, because we're going to have to work our tails off this next week uh, to make it all happen. So with that, uh, have a good rest of the week. Oh, if, if for, for two weeks from now, if there's subjects you want me to talk about, send them in through Facebook or the uh, or the Speed Therapy Society or even Facebook email. page. Huh? Speed Therapy Society Facebook page. Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Or or just, just send an email to either Carrie or Rich. Because uh, I'm always looking for ideas to talk about on Saturday mornings. Because like I said before, I talk about what you want to know about or also talk about what, what's going on. Like the shock tower braces were kind of like a hot thing this week in the last two weeks been a lot a lot of uh, uh, uh build plans so that's kind of what we talked about today so with that uh there's no more questions then i am going to wish everybody a good rest of the weekend and uh look for the encore presentation next week i have no idea what it's going to be uh but i'm sure to be sure to be a good one and with that i will see you all in two weeks have a good rest of your weekend and thanks thanks a lot for joining us today uh it's always fun having lots of people here. So we'll see you in two weeks. Goodbye.